Hello detectives and welcome to a very exciting and long-awaited video. Today is the official publication day in the UK and Ireland for my book of murder most unladylike short stories, Once Upon a Crime. Now this book I know that I've been waiting a long time to share with you and you have been very excited about it because it is the very, very final book in the Murder Most Unladylike Mysteries series. Of course, last year we published the final murder mystery in this series, Death Set Sale, but this book, this book of six short stories, collects up two short stories some of you may have read before, The Case of the Drowned Pearl and The Case of the Missing Treasure, but four of these stories should be completely or almost completely new to you. The first of them is the story about what really happened at Uncle Felix and Aunt Lucy's wedding. Now, I mentioned that this happens right at the end of Mistletoe and Murder, my fifth murder most unladylike mystery. And ever since I wrote that, people have been asking me what really happens, what is the case that Daisy and Hazel solve at that wedding? And I can finally reveal the answer. It is in this book. It's a story I wrote a couple of years ago and I finally get to publish it. So I'm very excited about that one. Then we have a story that is half about what happens on the way back from the case in A Spoonful of Murder, what happens on the boat back from Hong Kong, and half about what happens at the end of Death Sets Sail, what happens to my characters after the end of Death Sets Sail. So that is a very exciting story uh, that I am looking forward to you reading. We also have the story of what happens to George and Alexander at their school while Daisy and Hazel are getting ready to go on the Nile just before the beginning of Death Sets Sail. Get to hear a bit more about the Junior Pinkertons. And finally, we have my favourite story from the anthology, the story of what happens to Hazel's little sister, Mae Wong, right at the beginning of World War II. Now, as I hope you have heard, I have a new series coming out next year called The Ministry of Unladylike Activity. And as you can probably guess from that title, it is a bit of a follow on from the Murder Most Unladylike Mysteries series. It has three new stars. One of them is Hazel's little sister, May, who is about 10, 11 when that story starts. And then there'll be two totally new detectives who I'm introducing for this new series. I can't tell you any more about them at the moment, but this first book in the Ministry of Unladylike Activity series takes place in autumn 1940. Now, this story about May, the one in this book, takes place in September 1939, and it really bridges the gap between the Murder Most Unladylike Mysteries series and the Ministry of Unladylike Activity series. May has not yet met her two new best friends. Uh, and in this story, World War II has just been declared, war has just broken out in England, and May and her older sister Rose have to solve a murder at Uncle Felix and Aunt Lucy's block of flats where they are staying when World War II uh, is first announced. And I really like that story and I am really excited to let you see a bit more of May. Right now, for me, I have just finished writing the second draft of the Ministry of Unladylike Activity book one and it is with my editor at Puffin at the moment and it's going to be published next year in 2022. So I hope when you read this book you'll start getting really excited about that series because I certainly am very very excited. Uh, so that is what is in this book, six short stories, four of which are almost totally new. I really hope you enjoy them. I really hope you're excited about both this book and the new series coming and happy birthday to Once Upon a Crime. I hope you really enjoy reading it uh, when you get your hands on it this summer. Now to celebrate Once Upon a Crime's official birthday, I thought I would read from the beginning of one of the stories in it. And the story that I have chosen to read for this video is that story about what happens at Uncle Felix and Aunt Lucy's wedding, the case of the uninvited guest and that is there is the beautiful title page there and as I say this is a story that I wrote quite a while ago I wrote it back in 2017 I got married in 2016 and I wrote the first draft of this story for my very first anniversary and funnily enough this year will be my fifth wedding anniversary and the story is finally published so everybody else 
in the world apart from my husband and me can also read this story. So this is a story that is quite personal to me um, and also one that I am very, very fond of and one that I know a lot of fans have been very curious about. So uh, this is the very beginning of the case of the uninvited guest, the story of what really happened at Uncle Felix and Aunt Lucy's wedding. This is not the story of a murder case. It might well have been, which gives me a funny feeling when I think how close we came to disaster. But it is the story of a mystery, a very puzzling and dramatic one, that the Detective Society solved during a most important wedding. The Detective Society, of course, is Daisy Wells and me, Hazel Wong. We are fourth formers at Deep Dean School for Girls, though lately we have felt much more like detectives than schoolgirls, for only two days ago we were still in Cambridge, where we solved our fifth murder. The wedding was Daisy's Uncle Felix's, and it took place on New Year's Day 1936, in London at the St Pancras Registry Office. It was the first English wedding I'd ever been to and I was rather surprised at how different it was from the weddings I have read about in books. Story weddings have clouds of tulle and yards of satin, bridesmaids with posies and Kate Greenaway dresses and the voices of angelic choirs echoing off vaulted church ceilings. Uncle Felix and Aunt Miss Lydon's wedding turned out to be nothing like that at all. Daisy's great aunt, Aunt Eustacia, was shocked when Uncle Felix and Miss Lighton came to visit us at St. Lucy's College in Cambridge and told us their plans. What are you thinking, she said to Miss Lighton. A wedding without a white dress, with hardly any guests, on a simply ridiculous day of the year, if that nephew of mine is forcing you into this. He certainly is not, said Miss Lighton cheerfully. We discussed it thoroughly. Neither of us are interested in making a fuss. We simply want to be married and New Year's Day is the perfect day for a quiet ceremony. No one is paying attention. And as for the dress, I spend my life wearing the most ridiculous costumes, so it's perfectly reasonable for me to want to look sensible and like myself on my wedding day. I will wear my blue skirt suit and Daisy and Hazel can tie blue ribbons round dresses they already have. We shall all match nicely. Aunt Eustacia huffed furiously and stalked off back down the chilly college corridor to her office. I don't know what she's so upset about, said Daisy. It isn't as though she's ever been married. She's perfectly no nonsense and unconventional usually. I wondered if that was part of the reason. I was also secretly rather pleased that Daisy and I had escaped being dressed up like dolls. Daisy is a vision in lace, but I simply look as though I'm pretending. There was only one thing I was worried about. But what about the cake? I asked Daisy on our last night in Cambridge as we pulled our white dresses from our cases and laid them out for the St. Lucy's maid to iron. The cake is a very important part of English book weddings and I quite desperately wanted to taste one in real life. Of course there will be a cake, said Daisy. It simply isn't a wedding without cake, Hazel. And that is the very, very beginning of this story. And of course, when they get to London, they discover that all is not as it seems at the St Pancras Registry Office. There is somebody there who shouldn't be, and Daisy and Hazel have to work out who they are and what is going on before it is too late. Uh, so that is my little extract from Once Upon a Crime, and I hope it makes you want to go and read the rest of the story, and of course, the rest of the the book, this beautiful blue book, exactly the same colour as Aunt Lucy's wedding skirt suit and coincidentally the colour of the dress I wore when I got married. Uh, so happy birthday to Once Upon a Crime. Now if you're watching this on the 5th of August or right after this video and Once Upon a Crime has been released, I will just have done a Waterstones online event with wonderful fellow children's author Elle McNichol. If you managed to come to that, I hope you really, really enjoyed it. Uh, but there are two more ways that you'll get to watch me talk about Once Upon a Crime, answer questions about it. You might even get to ask me questions about the series, the book, what's next for me, how I write, how you can write too. The first of those is on Sunday, which I think is the 8th of August at 4 p.m. UK time, British summer time. And I'm going to be holding an Instagram live on my Instagram account, which is at redbreastedbird. And if you come onto my account, um, you'll be able to watch me answer questions. You'll have to ask me questions. I will be on there on Sunday, the 8th of August, from 4 to 5 p.m. And so that is one really good chance for you to get to ask me direct questions 
about uh, my books, about what's next, about what I'm doing right now. Then I have one more event uh, with YouTuber Gavin Hetherington on his channel, which is called How to Train Your Gavin. And that is on Friday, the 13th of August, spooky, but hopefully lucky for us. And we will be talking all about Once Upon a Crime, about my books, about the Ministry of Unladylike Activity. So check out his YouTube channel for exactly when that will be and about how you can watch. And of course that will be up after the end of that event as well. And both those events are completely free. So hopefully wherever you are in the world, whatever you're doing, you'll be able to tune in to one of my Once Upon a Crime events and find out a bit more about this book and about my series. And of course, after that, I am going away for six months. I am logging off the internet and I'm going to have a baby. Uh, I will be back in February 2022 when I'm working really hard to finish that um, finish that book, The Ministry of Unladylike Activity, finish work on all of the different drafts I do. I've done two drafts, but normally I have to do about sort of five or six. And this book, the first in a new series, I'll definitely be doing um, five, six, or maybe even seven drafts. So I'll be working really hard on that when I come back. But while I'm away, I hope you will have a great time reading this book, reading all of my, the other books in my Murder Most Unladylike Mystery series and the Guggenheim Mystery and getting yourself ready for more news about the Ministry of Unladylike Activity, which I will be announcing when I am back in 2022. Uh, the time will fly by, I know. Now, if you are in a different country and you would like to get your hands on your own edition of Once Upon a Crime, at the moment, uh, the only two places that I know are going to be releasing their own versions of Once Upon a Crime are first my wonderful Polish publishers. So if you live in Poland, you will be getting a Polish language version of Once Upon a Crime, I think probably next year, but it's definitely coming. And then in North America, which is of course um, USA and Canada, you will be getting a North American edition of Once Upon a Crime. And that won't be out for quite a while because my American publishers, Simon & Schuster, are starting publishing the series again next year with A Spoonful of Murder and they're going to be putting them out at regular intervals. But ultimately there will be an American version of Once Upon a Crime. Uh, while you wait though, if you do want to read this story, these stories a bit earlier than that, um, just get the English edition. Um, my favourite place to get my books, the UK editions of my books, is Blackwell's, Blackwell's website, uh, which is very lovely and ships anywhere in the world. Um, so that is my top tip for where to get a copy of this book. Uh, but of course it is also published as well as in the UK and Ireland. It's published in India, it's published in Australia and New Zealand and South Africa and Hong Kong, Hazel's home, and quite a few other countries as well. So do look around for where you can get your hands on this beautiful book. Uh, so that is all from me this time. I'll be back just once more before I head off uh, with a little video about um, some books that I think you might enjoy reading while I'm away, some other things you could do while I'm away. Uh, but until then, enjoy this book. Happy birthday to Once Upon a Crime and thank you for watching.